Yes, you are correct. For those of you who guessed it, uh, this is a mullet engine. I'm Steve Morris. You're at Steve Morris Engines. I'm going to tear this apart and I will show you exactly what's going on and I will show you uh, what's going on and why, at least why I think it happened. I don't even know what happened yet. So I'll, I'm going to show you all this stuff uh, because it's good information. And uh, unfortunately, the old boy did not make it nearly as far as he did the first time. So uh, we're going to find out why and see what's going on. So one thing that's interesting, take the valve cover off of this side and there's pieces of material here. <laughs> uh, not exactly sure what that is. That looks like a piece of block, piece of connecting rod, other piece of block. Gets all the way up through here. It is amazing what happens when stuff breaks. I'm gonna give this carbon fiber, broken carbon fiber drive shaft away. Dewey wants this bad, but he can't have it because I'm gonna give it to one of you guys. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna randomly throw this drive shaft that came out of my station wagon into somebody's order. So order tonight, tomorrow, Wednesday, and we're gonna select somebody out of those three days, tonight, tomorrow, and Wednesday, to put this carbon fiber drive shaft in. All you need to do is go to stevemorrisengines.com to the merchandise page, and you can get one of these. Dare, dare to keep engines off nitrous shirts. Brand new shirt, just releasing it today. My all time favorite shirt that comes with a sticker. I'll show you the sticker. I like big boost and I cannot lie. Super cool. Anyways, these two shirts, any of our rolled shirts, uh, just go to stevemorrisengines.com, the merchandise page, and get something, and you can get this carbon fiber drive shaft. Now, keep in mind, I am going to make somebody sign a waiver saying that they're not going to use this drive shaft because it is broken. It is bad. Right there. It is broken. <laughs> it is not savable. It came out of the world's fastest station wagon right here. 650s, 640s, 230 mile an hour, this drive shaft came out of it. So, anyways... Go to the store, buy that. And also, channel members. Channel members that are right now are getting a buy one, get one free shirt. You know how to make that happen. But it only applies to the old shirts. So you can still get one of these, but the but uh, one of the old series shirts is what you would have to select for the uh, get one free. So I'm Steve Morris. Go to the merch page. Get cool shirts. Can't beat it. Well, even though it... Uh, obviously broke the connecting rod and kicked it out the oil pan it's handy that it still rolls over so it still turns over that's good they're really hard to get apart when they don't turn over so let's take the valve train off this get the cylinder heads off and start looking at carnage 
got an engine running in the background here but what you see is i'm taking the rocker arms off one at a time inspecting them seeing if anything's bent push rods are bent something to note there's some more material from the bottom comes up through the through the uh open uh camshaft tunnel there and uh see if you see anything else in there but i don't see any big valve train stuff bent yet now obviously it kicked the rods out the reason i'm starting back here is to see what all's broken uh, bent back here because this is the area that kicked the rods out so typically it's going to have some kind of valve problem here so it's at least yeah it's uh let's see did it do that can't tell well, that looks all right all right so start tearing us the rest rest of the way apart Well, interestingly enough, all the rocker arms actually feel good and push rods. And uh, that's an O-ring off the intake manifold, another O-ring off the intake manifold. But this will be uh, interesting to see. Let's see. Uh, you know, I think I might have to get a flashlight so I can see in there. All right, I got a flashlight. See anything missing? Like, uh, there's a valve head. See a valve head there? Nope. <laughs> so, and you can see this valve stem tip right here is way higher than this. And when I took that rocker arm off of there, the valve stem went up. So it didn't stick the valve. Uh, it probably is just plain out broken it because that is definitely the one that kicked a rod out of it. That one and this one over here apparently. So let's get the heads off it, see what that looks like. And that lifter is jammed up. Those are fine. Those are fine. Those are fine. Fine, 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 fine. And it's uh, morphed up this one exhaust, which is pretty common. It's probably blowed that wheel up. Uh, piston came up, unconnected to the rod, or the rod unconnected to the crankshaft. Hits the valves, rocker arm, tries pushing into it and blows the wheel up. Very common. you're gonna to want to see this this will be the first time taking this head off to see the carnage in this hole we know that this valve is is uh, the head of the valve is off we know that the rod broke right here so Tim get right in there Whoa. that is remarkably not a big deal uh check this out there's the head of the valve the piston has turned sideways here that is remarkably little amount of damage for doing all of this you can see the head gasket's good everything's nice through there so we'll take a look at that and figure that out um <laughs> all right uh, I'll get this head off and then we'll do the exact same thing, show you what's over there. Alright, so we'll take this head off. Still, remarkable uh, no damage over there with that valve head being off. Which also shows you that the valve head didn't break while it was running. Because if it broke while it's running, it gets beat up like nobody's business. It looks like piston rod broke turned up 
hit the valve head, knocked it right clean off, stopped. Everything stopped right there. Yeah, to see that valve head, it's not bangled up or anything. It just hit, because the piston and, or the connecting rod must have broke, something happened, we'll figure that out. But you saw it, that thing was laying there. And <laughs> that thing was laying there, just like that. Now, if it had broken while it was running, this thing just going up back, I mean, just destroys everything. That is not destroyed. It just piston or connecting rod broke. Probably turned it, turned it, hit it, pink. That's all it took, and it sat there. That's amazing. So let's grab this other head, and we'll focus right over here, Tim, because it would be this side that is broken too. I would imagine we'll just see the exact same thing. Oh, even less, a little bit of water in that one. All right, let's see here. So now we will roll this over. Get that three quarter inch socket. There you go. Because this thing still rolls over. Notice that piston does not move. <laughs> dropping pieces into the oil pan and that one doesn't move all right so I'm gonna spin this uh, oil pan off here and and uh, flip it upside down and show you the bottom carnage You don't ever want to see this kind of thing when you pull the oil pan off. Hmm. Good dang. Yeah. Now we'll roll this engine over and look at it. This doesn't look as bad, obviously not as bad as the the mass exodus on on my engine where i had all eight rods completely disintegrate at the same time if you want to see that video check out that link right there you can put a link up there get you yeah check out that link right there uh that'll take you to insane video but yeah that's not what you want to see but it's amazing that this thing still rolls over and uh everything else looks fine up here so let's roll this engine over so you can see the bottom but that's what's in the oil pan set this over here now let's roll this thing over Oop, a little bit of water in it all right so you can see oh yeah now this one pretty obvious that you can see that piston and that rod shoved right up in there, right there, up into the block. Uh, this one over here is from this side. That's the one that is turned around sideways. Uh, let's roll this crankshaft over here. Um, actually, we'll probably can just do it by this. We'll roll that crankshaft up to where you can see it. Go ahead, Mitch. All right. So right through here, it's definitely destroyed the bearing. It didn't get hot, super hot, which is good. Let's roll it back over a little bit more, Mitch. Let's see here. I'm trying to see the underside of this crankshaft 
Now here you can see some heat, black. Yep, there you go. To where it definitely had grabbed and destroyed that bearing. All right, now once anything destroys a bearing like this, obviously it will destroy the rod very quickly. It'll grab the rod, break, break the rod apart when the journal looks like that. So that makes sense. And I'd say it probably started eating up that bearing on the, uh, hmm. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna keep on looking at other stuff here to check our block, see if our block is got any issues or is broke. But uh, that is definitely, obviously the problem, child. Definitely got the bearing first, turned color here. Interesting that the color is on the bottom side. Um, gotta think about that. It says not on the top side of the connecting rod where the connecting rod's pushing down on the journal. It wasn't there, it's on the bottom side. Let's see, as it's pulling around. So it's on the bottom side of the rod journal. Yeah, that uh, is on the pull. So it's pulling it back down. Oh, let's see here, just for kicks and giggles. I'll drive that piston and rod out. Uh, I think that one might, this one might be stuck. This one looks like it'll fall right out though. There you go. Ta-da! Rings are still free, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, That's still free. Munched up the piston pit, pin button right there, but that's because it hits all sorts of stuff. Now let's get the, I think I'm, I'm gonna try knocking that other piston out. It should come out. Yeah, you wanna turn that out of the way? Turn, turn more. Keep going, keep going, keep going, okay. It's it's past the rings. Uh, where's that dead blow hammer at? Ah, yes, a dead blow. All right. The CNC guy brings me the bigger hammer. Mainly because I don't want to beat in my ranch. Thank you. So there's the next one. Yep. So like I said, when it grabs the bearing at the big big end stuff, uh, once that big end distorts, breaks, stuff's flailing around in here. So this is this is pretty devastating, but. Uh, for what all's happened so far, not the end of the world. Well, no, it's not the end of the world. All right, let's tear this thing the rest of the way apart. And we'll see the more important thing here. So we'll get the rest of the piston rods out, get the crankshaft out, and we'll see if the block is broke. Before we take the, the crankshaft the rest of the way out, I'll show you the cylinder head here because that's pretty interesting. So, I mean, I, the cylinder head is 100% savable. This is the chamber that dropped the valve. Here, let me take care of that damn thing. And here's your, uh, rip that tool. You can see here, that is nothing. I mean, that is, that is as minimal amount of damage as you could ever wish for in a broken, uh, broken connecting rod and drop valve, you know, broken valve head. That is, that is as minimal as you could ever dream. This one here, you can see the the piston came up and hit the cylinder head hard enough right here that it 
broke a little piece off there. That also is not the end of the world, not, not a real big deal. Obviously, I'll probably have a bent valve, but it's not broke. So that's, that's interesting. All right. So, all right. Now we'll take the rest away apart. Okay, we have found the culprit. This number four main. Looks fine, looks fine, looks fine, looks fine, looks fine, looks fine. Looks fine. Is, oh, let's see, there you go, that's fine there. Hmm. Hmm, fine on that side. Bun and black on that side. You can look at the bearings here. Rear bearing looks okay. This bearing obviously is destroyed. Black, black in the cap, destroyed. Just run trash through them, but not destroyed. But that one definitely is destroyed. Number four. So let's get this uh, crankshaft out of here. Go ahead. That bearing is totally destroyed. Didn't spin yet, but uh, let's see where we're at here. Bunch of trash through everything, but that's to be expected. Alrighty, so uh, the block is actually looks like it's repairable. This isn't the end of the world. Two sleeves, some welding up through here. I doubt that this got into water because there's no water in the oil. Does not appear, uh, has a little crack in here from getting hit. Um, uh, the block, I don't think the block broke first. And I don't think the block is, uh, the block, I don't think the block is the culprit. I think the crankshaft is the culprit. So, and as we showed you right when we were taking it out, this side of the journal looks like a million bucks. No heat, no discoloration. Oh, you stay. That side of the journal is spun. Spun, black, super hot. You see right in there. You can see copper, you see the bearing. And then nothing right there. That looks good. So pretty much almost half the journal has been untouched. Now, what happens is this bearing gets destroyed. This bearing feeds oil to the connecting rod. So it feeds a bunch of trash up here, destroys the bearing on the connecting rod, breaks it. This one gets all foobarred up. So it just, it just junks everything over here because of this main being destroyed. Now, with this main only being, uh, being super nice, like, untouched brand new here and then destroyed over on the opposite 180 degree side of it that is leading me to say that this crankshaft is either broke or has bent uh only reason it would ever only reason it would ever bend boy that's it's it's possible i really have to think about that how it bend Usually they would not bend unless they get hydraulic or they have some kind of problem like that. Um, which would also hurt everything through here. So, and given where it's pushed down, bent at, let's see, so it's rotating this direction, push down. Hmm. I'd say it could have happened in this area here. 
Uh, I wonder if it ever would a hydraulic or ever had a problem on the seven or eight that would bend the crankshaft because it would be pushing down this way, pushes down this way. This side is fine. This side is now bent, pushes the crankshaft into it. That's possibility. That's that's really hard to do. Um, I can't crack check it. Obviously, we're gonna send it out to my crank guy, and they'll crank check it or crack check it. I don't see a great big obvious one. Um, and a lot of times it could be broken in the radius up here on the rod too, which allows the crankshaft to bend and uh, destroy itself on just one side of the main. If it had a a bare, actually, if it had a, even if it technically had a oil problem or a even an oil pressure problem it should have hurt the journal all the way around there's never a reason for it to perfectly untouch one side of the journal unless it's bent whoop, 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 you know like that so and that obviously destroys all the stuff on the connecting rod so that there is what happened to mullet We'll figure out, I have to do a little more searching here to see if we can figure out why, or if it, it is very possible if the crank is cracked, if it's got a crack somewhere that would allow it to bend, that's it. It just overpowered the crankshaft. The crankshaft gave it up before the block, which is pretty surprising to me, but anything's possible. Uh, or hydraulic, bent slash broke crankshaft, uh, but that is definitely the reason why that and those piston rods happen so uh all things said and done it's not the end of the world it is uh i have the technology i can rebuild him stay tuned